back on the Sportsman Zone. President of Tennis Jamaica, John Azar, has remained resolute in his stance that the decision to select his son, Daniel, as part of Jamaica's team for the upcoming Davis Cup tie against Lebanon is justified. Azar is facing backlash from some members of the tennis fraternity due to his son's inclusion. Among those expressing their displeasure is Jamaica's top-ranked player, Blaise Bicknell. Through written correspondence to Tennis Jamaica, he suggested that Azar's son, Daniel, lacks the credentials needed to be an automatic pick on the national team. Bicknell even threatened to withdraw from the team, citing a biased selection process that is not in the best interest of the team. Other players have since written to Tennis Jamaica agreeing that Daniel Azar should have competed at the national trials. President of Tennis Jamaica, John Azar, joins us to discuss some of the prevailing issues. John, it's a pleasure to have you. Thank you for having me. Pleasure to be here. Thank you, Lance. Tennis has been in the news, probably not in the way that you would have wanted, but a number of stories, both in the electronic media and the print media, the, the latest one coming on Sunday in the Jamaica Gleaner, rift over Davis Cup team widens, more players voice grouses over automatic selection of Daniel Azar. We see John Chin, who is on the team. We see Jacob Bicknell, who was on the team. Nicholas Gore, who had to go through trials, also writing to the association, having issues here. First of all, I want to get from your standpoint, if you feel, given everything that has happened, that from a tennis Jamaica standpoint, you have dealt with this issue in the best possible way you could have. Hart, you have to clarify that, Ricardo. Dealt with it in terms of what? The selection itself? No, or, dealt or the with response. it in terms of the response to everything that has happened. Yeah. Truthfully, maybe not, and I'm going to tell you why. I personally have felt very constrained mm -hmm. because of the fact that I've been under attack. My son's selection has been under attack. So I don't think I, I've dealt with it in as forthright a manner as I would have if it was another player. Mm -hmm. I mean, the bottom line is the selection, which hopefully we can get into some of the facts here because there's been a lot of noise, no question about it. But listening to the noise, one would think that Daniel's selection, he's a first time player on a Davis Cup team. Mm -hmm. When you look back at the facts and you look at the last three Davis Cup teams, so go back to early 2022, Yes. Daniel qualified for that team via trials alongside Jacob Bicknell. Both were on that team. We then went to Costa Rica in the summer. Daniel was selected to that team without trials, as was Jacob Bicknell. Mm -hmm. Then the home tie against Estonia in February, Daniel was again selected to that team without trials, as was Jacob Bicknell. Mm -hmm. There's only one difference with this team. Daniel was again selected in keeping with our criteria to the team. Yes. But I'm not sure if the issue really is around his selection or if it's around somebody else's non-selection. Mm -hmm. okay, if you look at it, he's been on the last three Davis Cup teams. The criteria has remained unchanged from the Estonia tie. He was selected to that. And there's absolutely no outrage, absolutely no comment, no nothing. And you were there. You will remember in the doubles tie against Estonia, a live rubber match, mm -hmm. the captain chose to play Daniel in that match yes. over other players. So I'm not going to say there's a non-issue. I'm going to say it's been challenging listening to the noise. It's only coming from a very, very, very small segment of persons. Yes. But in many instances, it has really not seemed fact-based. And I'll give you one example if I can. Yes. I've heard it branded about that Tennis Jamaica overlooked these ATP World Rank players. Mm -hmm. And two players are mentioned in particular, Alex Jones and Miles Jones. It sounds terrible. We're overlooking World Ranked players for the president's son. Oh, that sounds horrendous. Mm -hmm. But let's get back to facts. The two players in question are not eligible to play for Jamaica. They don't yet have a Jamaican passport and when they get their Jamaican passport in keeping with ITF regulations, they're not eligible to represent us for two years thereafter. But I've had to sit back and listen to 
the noise which mm. truthfully has been frustrating. We have a tie to prepare for. That's where the focus should be, but unfortunately, it hasn't. Yeah, let's take a closer look at the selection criteria then, shall we? Because Tennis Jamaica has maintained that as far as the selection criteria is concerned, you've operated within that, and Daniel's selection is within that. So this is what it says. In selecting national teams, Tennis Jamaica will keep at the forefront of its decision-making, selecting the strongest overall team to give us the best opportunity to be successful in the competition in question. It continues, such decisions will take into account all available information to include in no particular order the following. I want to take you up on the in no particular order in a little bit. ATP slash WTA World Ranking, ITF World Junior Ranking, NCAA Collegiate Tennis Results slash Ranking, Recent Performance at International Tennis Events, Recent performance at local tennis events to include, but not limited to, the All Jamaica National Championships. It continues, local rankings, UTR rating, WTN rating, head-to-head -head results between persons being considered, disciplinary or behavioral concerns, injury slash fitness concerns, inactivity, activity of persons being considered to include primarily tournament play, recommendation of captain slash coach for the team in question, recommendation of national tennis director, and the 15th and final one as part of that aspect of the policy, team chemistry. Um, there is a lot more to the policy. Clearly, we cannot go through everything, John. I think, but I think, I think though, Ricardo, respectfully, mm. number 16 and 18 are the two critical ones, especially number 16. Why do you say that? Because number 16 speaks very clearly to a developmental spot, and if I can read from it. And I want to get to that in a little while, but I want to first okay. of all deal uh, with let, this aspect. Let's deal with that I, first. I, yeah, I will get to 16 and 17 yeah. in a little while. So, so the criteria you've just read, mm -hmm. important to take note. One, it's an unchanged criteria yes. from the team that was selected in February. February. So that criteria came about in October 2022. 2022. And importantly, it's a criteria that has been shared mm -hmm. on recommendation with the ITF yes. to many national associations across the globe because they see it as a model yes. to be emulated. It's not something that we're ashamed of. It's actually a total opposite. We're very proud of it. Yes. It's a very transparent process. And I think it needs to be stated one quick thing yeah. that in this selection, mm -hmm. I had absolutely nothing to do with it. We appointed yes. a Davis Cup panel, yes. captain, coach, manager. They made yes. recommendations to a technical committee on which I do sit. Yes. It was unanimous coming right up, went to the board, and I recused myself. Mm -hmm. I have absolutely nothing to do with it decision but again I've sat back and already and, said and, 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 we'll, a whole lot and, we'll, and we'll get to some of that John but but here's where I want to go first of all right because I've taken a very close look at this policy and there is no doubt that based on what the policy says that there is absolutely nothing wrong with the selection of your son Daniel Azar but the issue that some individuals may have and maybe an independent viewer looking at this policy is that maybe there can be nothing wrong with selecting anyone because it's it's almost as if based on on how the the criteria is laid out the technical committee has complete discretion to decide who they select is, is that your understanding based on how this is laid out i would i wouldn't say that what i would say is the technical committee, mm -hmm. like it would be if a technical manager maybe on a football team, a cricket team, there's criteria within which they have to stay within. But yes, there is some level of discretion. I'll give you an example. Yes. Let's say you and I play tennis. Yes. It's not only you and I. A captain may look at who is our opponent. Yes. Our opponent is a left-hander who doesn't have a great backhand. Yes. You have a great serve slice and it's thought that your style of play will be far more effective against that opponent. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, you are correct in saying that the technical panel in this instance, Mel Spencer Davis Cup captain, who happens to be Blaze's personal coach, yes. Errol Campbell, who is a name very well known in tennis forever, former Commonwealth 
Caribbean champion, captain coach, and Noel Rutherford. Yes. Very esteemed panel. Now, you may want to ask me, or if I can, ask, if I can say, <laughs> what do you think the coach, Noel Rutherford, and the manager, Errol Campbell, have said yes. when asked by Blaze about this situation? Considering that we directed him mm -hmm. to speak to the panel when he was yes. invited in an August 9 meeting, do you know what, what the discussion was between them? What was the discussion? He hasn't yet reached out to them. Okay. He hasn't yet spoke to them, but we're hearing from a publicist mm -hmm. in the press all kind of things which but, but, are just but, but, not but, fact based. But stay with me here, John, because in many ways I almost want to stay away from the controversy as is and speak to if there is any possibility that there are issues with the criteria as it is laid out that would have led to this situation, that would have led to tennis observers um, feeling that there was some level of nepotism. I mean, and whether this is something that could be avoided going forward, um, and whether there needs to be any tweaking mm -hmm. of, of the policy. Yeah. On, on top of the point you were making, Ricardo, I took close observation on the words that Blaise Bicknell used, mm -hmm. that he said he had an issue with the automatic yes. selection of Daniel Azar, your son. And I wondered why he used the word automatic, because it may speak to some of what Ricardo just hinted at with regard to the policy going forward and uh, some clarity as to, um, as to the selection process, because Blaze's words were that Daniel was an automatic selection. Was he automatic? I think I can explain what he meant by automatic. I, I, would, I would like to know, I would think yeah. what, uh, what, what I believe he meant is this. The yeah. panel recommended four players to be selected to the team. Yes. Blaze Bicknell, mm -hmm. Randy Phillips, John Chin, and Daniel Azar, they were selected. Yes. For the fifth and final spot, the panel recommended trials for that spot. Okay. So what his thought was that is that Daniel should, should have, have been played a part the of trials. trials. Yes. But the reality of it is this. When you look at the Estonia team we played, yes. the team was Blaze, Randy, John Chin, Daniel, and Jacob Bicknell. Yes. So this is only a retention of the same four players or four of the five players. So while I wasn't part of the decision, when you look and hear the reasoning of the panel, why was Jacob Bicknell invited to trials versus an automatic pick, as you okay. put it? The answer is kind of very simple. Well, it's not how I put it. It's, it's Blaze Bicknell's word okay. that I was using. But do you know yeah. why he was invited to trials instead of being selected? Tell me. Because since February 5, mm -hmm. when he played that match in the Davis Cup, Estonia. brace yourself for this, brace yourself. He has not played one, one, international tennis match all year and he played Since a local February. he played a local event here and he lost a 42 year old man mm. so at the end of the day who is now on the team by the way well he won in trials so so the panel didn't discard him they simply said you played no tennis come to trials and let's see what you got mm. all right we still have more issues to discuss here and and we're going to be doing that, but we have to go to a break, do some business, and we'll continue our chat with John Azar. More to come. Don't move.